we're back in my backyard. So today we're going to be doing uh, the Testo 550 from 2015 versus the Testo 557 from 2020. So that's my old one. This is the new one. And so we're going to unbox it and then uh, we'll do a comparison and see how they how different they are. So here we go. Alrighty, so we have our Testo 557. So here's how it comes. Uh, it came. We, we ordered it on, on Amazon. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and open it up. So um, as you can see, it comes in the case. It's got a little cardboard thing that sits on it, and it's in the plastic. So let's take it out of the plastic. So this isn't mine. This is my, my dad's. He just bought it. So let's see if he can figure out how to open it. All right, so it comes in a, in a plastic case that we've all seen. And there it is. And this one actually comes with uh, hoses already. So this is the three or the the four port manifold. So there's the manifold. Let's take a look here. So it's pretty much the same as the five five uh, the five five zero, but as you can see here, it's got four ports. So you can actually pull vacuum through this. So let's go ahead. And... So and then of course it comes with your pipe clamps. One right there. It comes with batteries. It takes four double A's. And then right here is the vacuum gauge, and this one's nice because it's not a built-in micron gauge. It's actually an external one that you can put right at the service port of the unit. And we got your instruction manuals there, and then we have our four hoses. So one process line, one low side, one high side, and then one vacuum. So yeah, this is a pretty nice kit. So let's go ahead and get her all back together, and then uh, we'll see how it compares to the old 550. Okay, so we got her all hooked up. So we have our process line, our low side, our high side, and our, our uh, vacuum hose connected. Uh, so the way this guy works here is you have your standard buttons, but right here these are your valves that connect to the uh, process line or the vacuum line. Uh, so you can turn these and to connect the to the middles. So if you're pulling, doing a recovery, you would open these and you'd open this guy here and that would connect you to this process line. If you're doing a vacuum, you close this and you open this, and then it, this line would be connected to your vacuum machine or your vacuum pump. And then we have our two ports for our clamps, and then on the top we have the connection for the remote uh, micron gauge that's built in. So uh, let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time, see what it does. So we hit the power button here. Now that it's on for the first time, I believe it's going to ask us to set it up. So there's our uh, model. Now what we want to do is we're going to hit the set button and this is going to allow us to make changes. So right now it's asking uh, do we want Celsius or Fahrenheit? We definitely want Fahrenheit. And we're going to hit set again. Now it's asking us how we want to display our pressures. We want PSI or you can do PSIG. That's what we want. Microns. Okay and then this is um, we want to set our priority for cooling. Uh, if you go up and down, you can switch it for heat pump, or you can switch it for uh, heating and cooling. So you can put it in cool mode, heat mode, or heating and cooling where it automatically detect it. Uh, but usually I just put it in cool. All right, so now we're going to hit set again. It's going to say auto off. This is where the system will shut itself off after time. You can turn that on or off. Uh, we'll leave it off because I, I don't know about you, but I hate it when the thing turns off on me. Okay, so we hit set again. And then there we go. So we're all set. So we're showing zero. Now if you need to, if it does show some kind of reading and you want to zero it out, you just hold P equals zero. And that will basically um, zero out the gauges. All right, so now you hear, here you have mean, max, and minimum. So you can have it where it'll store the minimum pressure, uh, the maximum pressure, or the average. And then obviously escape. Right here, this is how you switch refrigerants. So you hit that, and then you hit up and down to choose the refrigerant you want to use. And you can delete, like there's a big list of refrigerants on here. Once you connect with the app, you can delete the, and you know delete all the ones you don't need, and then add them if you need them later. So that's why I only have uh, three on mine. I have H2O, R22, and 410A, and 407. But uh, if I ever need to, I can connect with the app and add them back. But yeah, it's a good one. Now, the nice thing about these Testos is you can uh, 
it has a pressure test so you, what you do is if you're doing a nitrogen test you can uh, you pressure it up and you hit this button here mode and basically you can hit start which is the play button so this is the time this is the uh, pressure you started it with this is the pressure you're at now and then that's the differential so this is actually really nice when you're using uh, using these gauges for nitrogen pressure tests but uh, yeah so let's go ahead and grab a tablet and we'll go ahead and uh, connect it to the app and see how that works okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna download the app so we're looking for the testo refrigeration app you can find this for Android or for iOS so we're gonna go ahead I already have it downloaded here so uh, when you open it this is what it's gonna look like so you're gonna go over to your gauges you're gonna hit uh, the up and down arrows at the same time and in the top corner you'll start seeing the Bluetooth flashing there it is you see it so now it's going to detect it make sure you have your Bluetooth turned on then you will go ahead and touch your gauges and then now it's gonna load okay so now that we have our our app opened up what we want to do is we want to change our list of refrigerants so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this top corner here and we're gonna to go to refrigerant list and then right here this is a list of all the refrigerants that are programmed on there so what we're not gonna use all of these so we don't want to have to scroll through all of them so what we're gonna do is we just uncheck the ones we don't want and then we leave the ones we want checked so we're gonna keep 410A, R22, 407C, and uh, H2O won't let us uncheck that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we've uh, got all of the refrigerants we want selected, we're going to hit transfer to instrument. It's going to say, are you sure? And we're going to continue. And now it's doing its thing. So it gives you a little thing of what's going on. Okay, so we got it all updated. Um, so now if we look at our refrigerants, we only have the ones we added. We have 410A, we have 407C, we have R22, and of course H2O. So now it's all set. All right, so we'll set ours to R22 because the system we're gonna hook up to is gonna be an R22 system. And let's see the differences. Okay, so we got the, the old trustworthy right here. This is my... Uh, these are my 550s. Uh, these were purchased in 2015. The block did crack one time. I sent it to Testo and they fixed it at no charge to me, which was really nice. Um, but that's pretty much the only time I've had to have service on it, and that was because I dropped it off of a uh, two-story uh, roof. But uh, no, these things have been great. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same as the 557. The only difference is obviously it doesn't have as many valves. Uh, and it doesn't have the connector for the uh, micron gauge uh, but as far as the app connection all that stuff is exactly the same so you just want to decide on what you you know what works for you this is a nice kit because then you don't have to buy a micron gauge you know you don't have to buy a bunch of hoses um, but uh, you know if you do it the way I do it and you go direct off the, the vacuum pump it's a lot faster but these are great gauges you know especially if you're starting out they're not as expensive as some other brands uh, but these are pretty nice too. If these ever die, I'm probably going to get a set of these. Um, but yeah, they're built pretty well. Everything's all brass and it's pretty strong. So let's go ahead and hook these up to an air conditioner and see what they can do. Alrighty, so we're at the air, air conditioner here. Uh, this is uh, an R22 unit. So we got my dad here. He's going to hook up his brand new gauges to my system, which hopefully works perfectly. <laughs> So he's gonna go ahead and he's gonna go ahead and put on the suction line first. And then hopefully, yeah, okay, cool. So he's bleeding the lines, so he doesn't get air in my system. Oh, you're good. Now usually you want to put your high side on, or I don't know if that really matters, but that's how I was taught. And he's going to bleed the lines out. Okay, so now we're putting in the uh, pipe clamps so we can calculate our subcoolant superheat. Pipe. Uh, temperature sensor. There you go. You're good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, one for the high side. And you can use either one of these. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And then they have these nice little flaps here on the side. That way you don't get moisture inside when you're not when they're sitting in the truck. So. 
Okay, so now that we got our gauges all hooked up to the system, we're going to go ahead and let it stabilize a little bit. Now, if we want to, this is our main page right here. So, uh, this is showing our low side saturation, our high side saturation. These are our pressures. We have our battery, uh, the type of refrigerant we're set to. And if we hit the down arrow, this is going to show us our, our pipe clamp temperatures. So this is the suction temperature and this is the high side temperature and we hit down again. And this is where it's going to calculate the subcool and superheat. Now, uh, whenever it shows uh, zero like that, that means you got a negative pressure or you got negative reading. So it won't show a negative number. It'll just go flat out. So we got to find out what's going on with that. Actually, you know what's going on with that is my system's not working right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there we go. We got a little bit of superheat. Now keep in mind that the the clamps will take a little bit uh, to adjust. So we're going to let her run for a little bit and hopefully we actually get some superheat on this thing because uh, I'm getting some subcooling coming on. But uh, like I said, sometimes you got to wait for it to stabilize. Okay, so we got her all hooked up. So that's pretty much how you use it. I got zero superheat. Something's going on with my system, but I'm not dealing with that today. And then that's your delta T. So pretty simple to use. Nice and rugged, waterproof for the most part. I've left them outside for like days because I left them at a client's house. But uh, yeah. Okay, so we got my old uh, Testo 550s hooked up in the same spots, and we're getting the same readings. So there we go. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's try and pull a vacuum on the uh, new Testo 557s. Okay, so we got our gauges hooked up to this old evaporator coil. I've had this thing under nitrogen pressure for about two months, so I know it's, it doesn't have a leak in it. Uh, I pulled the Schrader core out, still had nitrogen in there. Um, so first things first, we're gonna we got our vacuum probe hooked up. Okay, we have the large hose attached to our vacuum pump. This is a field piece VP85, uh, great pump by the way. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna have our high side connected to you here. Uh, we're not using our low side because uh, we don't have two ports on this evaporator coil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our high side. That way it's attached. We're gonna close this one here and we're gonna open this one here, okay? This is our isolation valves. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our vacuum pump. Okay, and then now we're going to open this up here to start our vacuum. Now, the one thing you have to do is switch it over. So we hit the mode button. That's for pressure testing. We hit it again. This is our vacuum mode. So once it goes below 10,000, we'll start seeing a reading. Okay, so now we got it under 10,000 microns. It's going to start showing a micron reading, as you can see there. And so we're, we would just pull our, va our vacuum like normal until it hits uh, minimum 500. Uh, personally, I like to go down to about 3 or 4, and then you can isolate it by closing this off here. See, and now, now you've isolated the pump from the evap coil so we can check our microns and that's how that works so this evaporator coil apparently has a big old leak in it so uh, we weren't able to pull a full vacuum on it but uh, that's basically how you use this uh, this gauge so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe hit that bell notification comment tell me what a horrible technician I am and make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook thanks for watching and see you on the next one